All right, welcome back to you, Unit 4, Day 12. So remind us before we get started, make sure you have your history notebook out and you're taking notes as you move through the video. And make sure you complete the vocabulary for this video, either highlight in your notes or written down at the beginning. So let's go ahead and get started. So our key terms for today are going to be Khrushchev, Destalinization, Brezhnev, Gorbachev, Perestroika, Glasnost, Bay of Pigs, Cuban Missile Crisis, Detente, Prague Spring, and Solidarity. Our key concepts are for today are going to be the causes and progressions of the Cold War, life in Eastern Europe during the Cold War. So right after World War II, uh, Eastern Europeans going to be very much controlled by the Soviet Union, right? And after the after World War II, the Soviets are going to fail to hold open elections and they're going to re with refuse to withdraw from the conquered areas after that they conquered after World War II. And what they do is they set up Soviet satellite regimes, meaning that they're kind of, oh, you're technically free, but you're under the control of the Soviet Union. What does this look like in reality? This looks like strong authoritarian control of society and regulation of all aspects of life. They extensively control the media. Um, no information gets out unless they want it to. And industry, especially heavy industry, is going to focus on military guns, weapons, tanks, missiles, rather than like more consumer goods, uh, radios, TVs, things like that. So again, it's very strong authoritarian regimes, very few uh, human rights or human liberties. So the Soviet culture, economy, and society is going to start with rapid industrialization. Uh, what does that mean? That means that they're going to quickly industrialized, all state-sponsored, state, state sponsored, controlled from the top down. We're going to have very significant social change. We're going to have the secularization of society through the purging of religion. So it's going to be more secular, um, not religious focused. Um, and at the same time, they're purging all of these religion. Um, they're also going to be persecuting ethnic and religious minorities. Um, art... Um, is going to reflect Soviet culture through constructivism. Um, it's it's going to very highlight the kind of growing and industrialization of um, the Soviet Union. Um, in schools, science, social studies, and mathematics are going to be heavily favored over more liberal arts um, because it's all about growing and industrializing and becoming a united, um, strong country. Um, by the 1950s, the entirety of the Soviet Union is industrialized completely and up to modern standards such as like the United States. What does this show? This has a cost of huge damage to the environment. Um, and at the same time, while they have all of these things, their agricultural sector is horribly, horribly inefficient, leading to mass starvations and famine around the Soviet Union. Now, of course, like most leaders, Stalin will die in 1953, um, and we get uh, Nikita Khrushchev as chairman of the USSR. Now, he, was, he wasn't he was as strict or as kind of hardcore as Stalin was, and he's going to actually open society to innovation and some, I repeat, some decentralization. Um, he's going to actually open up the policy of decentral de-Stalinization, um, which is going to upset many conservatives who like Stalin. Um, but this is he's going to admit uh, admit to some of the atrocities and massacres and realize that hey, Stalin wasn't the best person for Russia. He was kind of heavy-fisted, hard-handed. He's going he's going to make Russia a little bit more liberal. I mean, a little bit more liberal. Um, He's actually also going to start this uh, the space program with Sputnik, which scares the United States something fierce. Um, he's actually going to, for a time, stop the growing of the growing of the Soviet Union. Um, he's going to kind of stop trying to conquer new areas for the Soviet Union. But if the Soviet had control of an area, he wasn't going to let that go. And he's going so, it, for example, in Hungary, they're going to try to overthrow the Soviet regime. He sends the tanks in, cuts it out. Now, Cuba during this time um, is really, we're going to talk about this at a later date in another day, but just as a kind of showing this, um, Cuba really is very close to the United States, and 
when Cuba falls to communism in 1953, the United States is going to train Cuban exiles in order to overthrow Castro's regime. And it, it's a whole mess. It's a giant mess. It's a massacre. Um, and this directly leads to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now, the Cuban Missile Crisis is uh, John F. Kennedy and Khrushchev. Uh, it's kind of the pinnacle of the Cold War. Um, well, the Russians want to put, put missiles in Cuba. The United States doesn't want nuclear missiles that close to Cuba. So this really kind of gets America kind of going and kind of threatens, like, if you keep missiles in Cuba, like, it's going to lead to World War Three, and it's just this big mess. Um, the reason is is that um, America had missiles in Turkey, which is, like, super close to the USSR, so it was just kind of a balance issue. Um, but it's 13 days. It gets resolved by... Russia removing its missiles from Cuba, and the United States removing their missiles from Turkey, and then everybody calms down, right? Um, Khrushchev, right, kind of starts pushing away from the Communist Party, doing his own things, and he becomes too difficult to control, so he gets removed in a coup, and we get uh, Brezhnev, um, who is in power from 1964 to 1982. Um, and he maintains more stable Soviet models. Um, he has a doctrine where if his, his doctrine is to maintain um, Soviet control um, and support any countries who want to uh, be uh, become communist and give them kind of support and things. This is directly going to lead to a few things. Um, we have um, Yugoslavia and Albania becoming independent communist states. Uh, the Hungary, uh, the Hungarian challenge in 1956, uh, which is going to be Hungary. They don't want um, communism. Um, so they're going to push back against communism, try to kind of become more democratic. Um, and Brushnev is going to send in the tanks and crush that. Um not dealing with that. Uh, in 1968, we have the Prague Spring in Czechoslovakia, uh, where they were more. They wanted to be more liberal, right? They wanted more control. They wanted kind of more um, a liberal style communism with some elected officials and some things. Um, the Soviets aren't dealing with that. They come in and they crush that using tanks. And Poland in the 1970s and 80s, again, they're very Catholic um, uh, and very nationalist. They're very much, we're Poland. Um, and at the time, the Pope was also Polish. So it's just very much where um, they, it was kind of really kind of pushing it for the Soviets to intervene. Um, in 1980s, um, Polish labor union known as Solidarity began strikes and it almost leads to Soviet intervention, but Poland is able to control it and kind of keep it. But Poland, the second the U USSR falls, Poland will m like become independent and very, very quickly and push communism out. Now, by the 60s and 70s and really by the 80s, right? We have an era known as detente, which is a French word meaning to um, kind of cool off, calm down. Um, so this is kind of an era of cooperation, right? So the United States and the Soviet Union kind of really kind of talk it out or try to at least. Um, well, this doesn't really happen um, because of we have Vietnam uh, during the late 60s, early 70s from 68 to 73. Um, but there is talks of limiting nuclear weapons, the SALT in 1972 and SALT II in 1979. Um, and it's kind of to limit the amount of nuclear bombs that are available on both sides. It doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, the... Congress and the Soviet uh, Communist Party are like, um, no. Um, and the truly demise of detente is going to be uh, kind of rising tensions and uh, Reagan. Reagan's going to kind of remove detente and kind of claim Russia as the evil empire. 
Um, in 1980s, we have um, Soviet intervention in Afghanistan, which is really going to push Reagan to claim Russia as the evil empire. Uh, another, as I said before, the demise of the taunt is going to be the U.S. defeat in, in Vietnam. Soviets start losing in Afghanistan, right? And it's just this mess of back and forth, back and forth uh, between Soviets and the United States and proxy wars. Um, and also, we have a lot of Cold War counterculture um, in the 60s and 70s. In both Russia and the United States, we have the rise of, like, commonly turned as hippie movements, kind of peace and love um, this is kind of just kind of springing up all over the world. A lot of the youth are very war weary. They're tired of conflict. They're tired of this. It's kind of time for changing. And this really does kind of kind of calm down the world because they start growing up. They start being the ones in charge, and it just kind of leads to a few things. Now, by the end of the Cold War, we have Gorbachev from eighty-five to ninety-one, um, and he kind of sets the, the satellite state. Says, "Hey, you're on your own." Right, be communist. Don't be communist. Whatever. Right, you're on your own. You don't have any Soviet support. What does that mean? That means that the, everybody who was didn't want to be communism stopped being communist. Um, and by by pretty much 1991, the Soviet Union's collapsed. In Poland, Solidarity leader uh, Leek uh, Wilsia, he's going to win. He's not going to be communism. Communism overthrown peacefully through elections in Bulgaria and Hungary. Czechoslovakia's Velvet Revolution, Velvet being very soft, it was a very soft rev revolution in 1990, is going to divide the Czech and divide Czechoslovakia into the Czech Republic and Slovakia. The only violent revolution is in Romania. Uh, East Germany will open the Berlin Wall in, in 1989 with the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the two Germanies will be united. And Gorbachev's reforms I have two big reforms that are going to kind of end the Soviet Union, perestroika. They're going to try to restructure the economy with more capitalist intentions. And Glasnost, this is openness. He's more open to public criticisms of Stalin's mistakes and the government's mistakes. And he also begins to admit past mistakes. And by December 1991, the Soviet Union will collapse and be replaced with uh, the, the Russian Federation under Boris Yeltsin. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, make sure you're taking notes, and I'll see you guys in class. Thank you.